So water is really important to us, clearly. We need it to sustain life. It has a couple unique properties that really make it so our Earth acts the way it does. One of those properties is density. Density is how much mass there is per an object and an object per its volume. So two objects of the same size where one lays, weighs less but one weighs more will have different densities. One example of this that you can think about is taking a rock and a marshmallow of the same size. Rocks are generally pretty heavy. If you take the rock and throw it into the pond, it's going to sink. That's because it's more dense than water. The densest objects will go to the bottom. Now if we take that marshmallow that's the same size and throw it into the pond, it's going to float on top. And that's because it's less dense. And so less dense things float. And so today we're going to experiment with that in water with what I call the blue ice cube experiment. Let's go ahead and get our supplies. Okay, here are the supplies we will need today. First off, water. This is just regular tap water that I've let come to room temperature. We're also going to need salt water. So I've made mixed up some salt water by putting about two tablespoons of salt into about a cup and three quarters of tap water and then just mix it up really well. We're also going to need two plastic cups and you can go ahead and label them salt water and tap water. Um, I just use a piece of tape. You can also write directly on the cup if you want. Finally, I said we're doing an ice cube experiment, so we need ice cubes. You want to go ahead and color the ice cubes when you make them. So I've put about two to three drops of food coloring in each of these ice cube tray holders um, to get my blue ice cubes. But you can do whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be blue. So I'll give you a chance to go ahead and gather your supplies. Now time to get going with our experiment. So first we're going to fill each of our cups up with, halfway up with water. We'll start with the tap water, fill it up about halfway. Next we'll fill our other glass about halfway up with salt water. And what do you notice here? Make some observations. You may notice that one cup looks a little bit murkier than the other. This is because I'm using iodized salt. If you have kosher salt, it'll actually make both cups look almost just as clear as each other. So now, the time for the best part of the experiment, though. I want you to pause this video in a second after you listen to the directions, and then go ahead and put a blue ice cube into each cup, and then observe it for a couple minutes, maybe five minutes. Watch what happens to the ice cube, watch what happens to the water, and see where the color goes. Make observations and ask questions, because that's what scientists do. Okay, ready? Pause the video and go experiment. What did you see happen? Did the two cups look the same? Or did the two cups look different? My guess is that you would see the two cups look different. Here's what my two cups looked like. On the left is the tap water, and it's blue all the way through, basically the same color blue. On the right is the salt water, and it's interesting because it's here, we can see two different layers. Most of the food coloring has stayed at the top, which we can tell because it's a darker blue layer. That's because of the density. Now think about which layers were most dense and which were least dense. Also, do you think salt water and regular water have a different density? It turns out they do, and you can see that in the way the two cups act differently. In the salt water, the blue water from the ice cube tends to stay on top because it's less dense than the salt water. But in the cup with just tap water, it mixes together because the water in the cup and the water from the ice cube have the same density. You can let these cups sit for a couple days and see what happens. 